Hello, this is Eric Strong from the Palo Alto Veterans Hospital and Stanford University. This is the fourth lecture in this lecture series on mechanical ventilation, and the topic is normal gas exchange. Here are the learning objectives of this lecture. First, to understand the physiology of gas exchange in the lungs as it pertains to mechanical ventilation. Second, to become familiar with the alveolar ventilation equation and the alveolar gas equation. And finally, to understand the significance of the AA gradient and be able to list common reasons why it might be increased in a particular patient. In general, gas exchange and the closely related topic of gas transport and delivery is a highly complex subject. However, only a very basic knowledge is necessary for managing a mechanical ventilator in the vast majority of patients. Just be aware that the following is a drastic simplification of a very complicated subject. Here is a schematic representing the gas exchange that occurs in the lungs. Oxygen-poor blood, shown in blue, enters the pulmonary capillary bed from the right side of the heart, where it travels past the alveoli. As it does so, there is an exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen across the alveolar capillary membrane before the now oxygen-rich blood continues to, to the left side of the heart and onward to the systemic circulation. Here are typical values for the partial pressures in millimeters of mercury of oxygen and carbon dioxide for a healthy person breathing room air at sea level. Returning mixed venous blood has a typical oxygen pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury and carbon dioxide pressure of 46 millimeters of mercury. As blood travels through the capillary bed, it reaches an equilibrium with the intraalveolar air, which leaves both the systemic arterial blood and the alveoli with partial pressures of oxygen of 100 millimeters of mercury and carbon dioxide of 40 millimeters of mercury. In pathologic conditions in which the alveolar capillary membrane is disrupted, such as interstitial lung disease or the emphysema subtype of COPD, an equilibrium is not reached, leaving the systemic arterial blood to have a lower partial pressure of oxygen as compared to alveolar air. There are two equations that are critical to understanding gas exchange. These are the alveolar ventilation equation, which explains the factors determining the arterial carbon dioxide tension, and the alveolar gas equation, which explains the factors determining the alveolar oxygen tension. While I don't consider it necessary to memorize these upcoming equations, it is imperative to remember the key points of each. First, here is the alveolar ventilation equation. It states that arterial CO2 tension is equal to the rate of systemic CO2 production times the pressure of inspired air divided by alveolar ventilation. If you recall from lecture two, alveolar ventilation is equal to tidal volume minus dead space times the respiratory rate. The key point of this equation is that the PaCO2 is inversely proportional to alveolar ventilation. In other words, the faster and or deeper that a patient breathes, the lower the PaCO2 will be. Related to that, the greater the amount of dead space, the higher the PaCO2. Here's the alveolar gas equation. It states that alveolar oxygen tension is equal to the fractional concentration of O2 in inspired air times the difference between the pressure of inspired air and water vapor tension, all minus the PaCO2 divided by a value known as the respiratory quotient. The fractional concentration of oxygen in inspired air is 21% or 0.21 for patients breathing room air. The respiratory quotient is the ratio of the volumes of carbon dioxide produced to oxygen consumed per unit time. Although the respiratory quotient is dependent upon diet, all but the most extreme diets produce an amazingly consistent respiratory quotient of approximately 0.8. The key point here is that alveolar oxygen tension is increased by high FiO2 and decreased by high PaCO2. The final topic of this lecture is the alveolar arterial gradient. Mathematically, this gradient is simply the difference between the alveolar and arterial oxygen tensions. Conceptually, the AA gradient is a measure of how effectively oxygen moves from the alveoli into the pulmonary vasculature. The higher the gradient, the more difficult oxygen exchange is. A small gradient is actually normal and increases with age. There are several different equations used to estimate the normal gradient. Here is the most common. 
normal AA gradient in millimeters of mercury is approximately equal to the age in years divided by 4 plus 4. Regardless of whether or not a patient is currently receiving mechanical ventilation, identification of an increased AA gradient begs the question, what's causing it? I categorize etiologies of this into four different basic mechanisms. First, the most common mechanism is a mismatch between ventilation and perfusion, whereby alveoli are not ventilated in proportion to their blood flow. There are numerous examples of this, including pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary edema, and COPD. The next mechanism is a shunt, whereby oxygen-poor blood is redirected straight into the systemic circulation, bypassing the alveolar capillary membrane. Examples of this include some forms of congenital heart disease and pulmonary arteriovenous malformations. Next is thickening of the alveolar capillary membrane, which impairs diffusion. This is seen with interstitial lung disease and pulmonary fibrosis, along with pulmonary edema. Finally, is outright destruction of the alveolar capillary membrane as seen in emphysema. I hope you have found this lecture on normal gas exchange uh, to be both interesting and useful. Uh, please feel free to continue on to lecture five, where I will discuss how we monitor gas exchange during the process of mechanical ventilation.